Hey friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk, and I have uh, two reports I wish to share with you, and they are from literally opposite ends of the planet. I want to first uh, start off with uh, Antarctica. In my continuing series of bringing you updates on what's going on with the glaciers in Antarctica and Greenland, that's the second part of this uh, video segment. We'll discuss what's going on in Greenland. First, to uh, Antarctica. Twenty-five percent of the west of the West Antarctic ice sheet is in danger of collapse. These glaciers have thinned and weakened dramatically over the past quarter century leaving 24% of the ice in the western part of the continent seriously weakened and in danger of collapse. I did a video segment some time ago where scientists have found out, have learned, that there's a big void deep within Thwaites Glacier. So instead of being solid ice, it's like a, basically a big air pocket. And it's not an insignificant size. It is fairly large. So that, you know, that if you lose any more ice there, that whole thing could just come, come down. In some uh, places of, on Antarctica, glaciers have thinned by approximately 122 meters. That's about uh, 400 feet. And this stag, this uh, huge loss, nothing to do with weather fluctuations. It's happened over decades due to climate warming, due to humans burning fossil fuels. And this ice loss is increasing. It's accelerating. West Antarctica's two biggest glaciers, the ones I've been following and, and to keep you guys up to date on, Thwaites and Pine Island, are melting away five times faster now than they were at the beginning of the survey in 1992. This is that exponential increase. So to uh, determine and document these uh, changes in the ice, Researchers examined regional climate models and satellite data over the last 25 years. And in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, they published their findings. They looked at 800 million measurements of ice sheet height in Antarctica. That was recorded between 1992 and 2017 by, by ERS, the European Remote Sensing Satellite, ERS 1 and 2. Also, NBISAT, which is Earth Observatory Observing Satellite, Environmental Research Satellite, Cryosat-2. All the satellites were deployed by the European Space Agency. Now, I just have to kind of make the observation. Where's NASA? Where's NASA in all this? Where's NASA satellites? Well, that's right. Budget cuts. So using these measurements, the researchers calculated the volume of Antarctic ice mass separating uh, separately from the fluctuating, you know, snowfall that comes down. You know, you get snowfall accumulates, recedes. So they factor that in. They remove that. They took out that uh, variable. You know, and they use computer models, of course. And they found that significant areas of the ice sheets across Antarctica showed signs of severe weakness or dynamical imbalance. This is due to, and it was actually most widespread in West Antarctica, destabilizing more than 415,000 square kilometers of ice. And this ice loss, this loss of ice mass, was not replenished by snowfall. In Antarctica Peninsula, the spike of land that extends northward from West Antarctica, right, the little thing juts out into the Southern Ocean, and approximately 11, uh, 18,000 square kilometers of ice is also extremely unstable, as is about 57,000 square kilometers of ice in East Antarctica, according to the same study. The lead study author, Andy Shepard, director of the Center for Polar Observation and Modeling in the UK, says that Knowing how much snow has fallen has really helped us to, to detect the underlying change in glacier ice within the satellite record. He continues, we can see clearly now 
that a wave of thinning has spread rapidly across some of Antarctica's most vulnerable glaciers, and their losses are driving up sea levels around the planet. Since 1992, melting ice in Antarctica alone has led to sea level rise of about five millimeters. Example, five millimeters, big whoop. That's around the planet. Right? That's not an insignificant amount of liquid being added to the ocean. Now, factor that in along with how fast the ice is melting, not only in Antarctica, but in Greenland. And of course, Antarctica holds the largest uh, reserve of frozen water, landlocked water. We can see now that the prospect of sea level rise being much greater is increased. So there you have it. And you know, and factor in thermal expansion. And uh, hmm. we're going to be looking at a lot of coastal cities in at risk of being flooded out. Okay, now let's flip to the other side of the planet. Let's now look at Greenland. Greenland's ice sheet was growing. Right? I just did a video segment on the Jakobshavn uh, glacier that was growing a little bit, but it is now in a steep decline. All of Greenland, not to Jakobshavn. So Jakobshavn is like one little blip while, the, while all the other ice sheets on Greenland are rapidly losing their ice. And basically what they're finding is that Greenland's ice sheet is melting six times faster than it was in the 1980s. And of course that melt water is causing sea levels to increase. So uh, in a study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, they looked at, carefully reconstructed the behavior of the ice sheet in the decades before uh, more uh, sophisticated methods became available to collect data. Scientists already knew there was a lot more ice in Greenland in the 70s and 80s, and now they're having precise measurements to determine how much of that is, is melting away. When you look at several decades, <laughs> this is a quote from Eric Renault, who is a co-author of the study. He's from University of California, Irvine. He's a glaciologist. And he said, when you look at several decades, it is best to sit back in your chair before looking at the results because it is a bit scary to see how fast it is changing. All right. Now, Greenland is just an, an island way up in the high uh, Arctic, but there's a ton of ice there, lots of it, and it could transform the planet, right? increase the sea levels dramatically. Greenland ice sheet has existed for 2.4 million years and is 3.4 kilometers thick at its deepest point. If you look at the entire ice mass, it weighs as much. Now, this is an interesting stat. It weighs as much as the Earth's entire atmosphere, which is about six quintillion pounds. Uh, converted into 2.7 quintillion kilograms. What is a quintillion? A quintillion is a one followed by 18 zeros. So that is a quintillion. So basically 10 to the 18. So you have 2.7 quintillion kilograms or 2.7 times 10 to the 18 kilograms. So it goes to show how heavy the atmosphere is, and then you have all this you know, ice is equivalent to the atmosphere. So if it melted entirely, sea levels would rise by seven and a half meters this century, if it all melted. Scientists use laser measurements of the height of the ice, measurements of the ice sheet's total gravity, and satellite photos to gauge changes in ice thickness. This is how they know the, the ice sheet is melting four times faster now than it was in 2003. 
To extend the record further into the past, this is a brief look at the methodology. The researchers divided Greenland into 260 basins of ice, think of sort of like a, a grid pattern, which they studied individually using a combination of direct measurements of ice changes in satellite photos and computer models uh, modeling of the ice behavior. They found that between 1972 and 1980, Greenland actually gained roughly 100, and, uh, excuse me, 47 trillion kilograms of ice per year. Okay. So in those eight years, Greenland gained approximately 47 trillion kilograms of ice per year. The real mass loss they found started in the 1980s. Between 1980 and 1990, the island lost approximately 51 trillion kilograms of ice per year. It's per year. Between 1990 and 2000, lost about 41 trillion kilograms per year. Slight slowdown. Then, in the 2000s, things kicked into higher gear. A rapid increase in ice loss rate. What started happening in the 2000s? We started recording the warmest years on record. Between 2000 and 2010, Greenland lost about 187 trillion kilograms of ice per year. So, you know, if you want to, that's basically, you know, if you look at the previous decade, that's a little more than four times as much ice loss, which goes back to the statement I just said a few moments ago. Between 2010 and 2018, the ice sheet lost approximately 286 trillion kilograms of ice per year. Now we're really kicking things up. Those numbers basically remove all any doubt what researchers and uh, people who live in Greenland uh, already knew. Islands changing, the glaciers are receding and melting at an alarming rate. And as I just mentioned, the dramatic uptick in the ice loss in the last two decades coincides with a similar surge in atmospheric greenhouse gases and atmospheric warming. Nine of the 10 warmest winters on record have happened since 2005. And don't forget, July of 2019 was the hottest month ever recorded. And of course, this is gonna dramatically affect the ice sheets uh, future, if it persists or not, what it does to global sea levels, and how humans cope with that. So um, there you have it. Very alarming, but that is what's going on. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.